battling it out for darting supremacy. This is the place you want to be as a dart player. Premier League to play in the highest level. The 20th year of Premier League dart. These are the best players in the world here competing for one tail. I love it. You have to be on your A game week in, week out. I think Nathan, under pressure, is one of the best players in the world. I, I never know what to expect out of Nathan. I've always enjoyed him. But Nathan is a fantastic guy. As a player, he's a fighter. He's a gritty, determined player that, you know, even if you're four or five new up, you never won the game before it's won. Now he just looks like he's back at home, feet firmly under the table again, and he's looking good. Darts has gone to the next level over the last two or three months. It's worldwide now. People. Is where we go, people know who we are and, and what darts is. So, if I can be a, a part of that to make it grow even bigger, then you know, I feel like I've, I've done my job. I know I'm not the best dart player in the world, <laughs> but what I do have is I have the, the will to win. That's been the story of my career. You know, I've had so many setbacks in my career, but I always find a way to come back from them and come back, you know, bigger and stronger. And even if I'm 5 0 down, I can still come back to win and never give up. From the northwest of England, 24 year old Nathan Aspinall. What an opportunity to make a little bit of history. To be champion, you have to feel for Nathan Aspinall. Nathan Aspinall has come of age. What a moment this could be for Nathan Aspinall. He's got tops of the match. Nathan Aspinall's name goes up in light. The final of the UK Open, young Nathan Aspinall, who catapulted himself into the darting spotlight. He's done it! You are a major winner. Played well in the Worlds, won the UK Open, come in here and prove that you are as good as what, what everyone thinks you are. Absolute perfection. He's got something. On his World Series debut, he has swept aside all before him. The most wide open world match play in history. This is big. And it is Nathan's night in the Winter Gardens. The biggest title of his career. So obviously the match play was the highlight of my career so far. Such a high. The back end of last year was absolutely pathetic, shall we say. Didn't perform well. Obviously I got invited back into the Premier League because obviously I won the match play. So that was a massive, that was a massive boost for me. I just wanted to start the season off well and I didn't. I'm either losing the first game or I'm getting to the final, so I feel like it's coming back a bit now, slowly but surely, I'll be playing regular. I've got a bit more confidence now because obviously I've won a night, a couple of final nights, and I feel like over the next few weeks, my me, me A game's going to come back. Oh, I hope it does anyway. <laughs> We're down by the seaside. The darts have arrived here in Brighton and the race for the top four is certainly hotting up. Nathan Aspinall has catapulted himself into the playoff places, but wow, is it getting tight. I don't reckon you're going to play very well today, no practising on your own. That's all right, mate. You do whatever you want. Nice to see you. I don't know if Jesus still won't come out, is it? One more cup. One more cup. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big evening ahead. These two players separated by two points. Gerwin Price, seventh in the table. Luke Humphreys has probably not got the points tally. He'll feel his performances deserve a tournament average of around about 101. Is tonight the night when he finally gets a nightly win for the world number one? And it is a convincing victory in the end for Luke Humphreys through to the semi finals. Double ten. And it's Luke Littler that does win the match in the end. A really solid, solid performance against the lackluster Nathan Aspinall, really struggling to find his form. What, a pair of oh, we what will this game bring if they both play anywhere near their A game? This won't last long. Double 18. What a performance from Luke Humphries. An average of 113.71. They were both amazing. That's not bad, is it? Well, they great game of darts, that wrong. Luke Humphreys is playing like a man possessed this evening. Michael Smith stands in his way. Double eight now, and that is in. And that is his first nightly win 
in the Premier League this year, and what a performance this evening. I played really well tonight, and it was my night. Next week, it, it might not be that way, but uh, you know, I'm really proud of the way I played tonight. Yes. The difference between football and darts, eh? <laughs> I've got a board in the garage. <laughs> Why are you retired, you, Gus? <laughs> Someone said that the other time. <laughs> 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 Is he for a retired man? Oh, mate, I'll tell you what, I'm always on the go, mate, always on the go. He was practising last night, let's get that in early. Really? <laughs> I love to see the games when the Dutch guys are playing. And yeah. yeah, it's a quite big thing in Holland. I used to play it when I was younger, it's in the garage at home. I just love it, man. These boys are so good as well. You know when, like, it's a big game and it comes down to, like, decisive moments and you're up there by yourself? That's one thing. Obviously, we're in a team sport, so it's very different. But, like, that's the one element that I think you've got to have, like, big cojones. James Madison, Nathan Espinel versus Mickey Van Der Ven and Michael Smith. Get you on! Sweaty my hands, Nathan. Well, like, <laughs> pressure, man. Twenty. That breeze. Yes. Uh, Eighty-three. Jason, you require one hundred. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Now. Ninety-nine required. I expected him to be half decent and he was, so uh, yeah, glad I partnered with him and uh, to beat him. You're on that way, Barbara, with this record. <laughs> that be for Nathan, yes. Yeah. You got my game during this. Welcome to Nottingham, a great city, a sporting city, and tonight it is a darting city, and it might be the night that Peter Wright finally breaks his duck in the Premier League. Never used them before. I used them in uh, New York. Tonight is the night it changes for Snakebite. It's Humphreys who goes through to face Peter Wright in the semi-finals. The big night for Nathan, bit below par last week, and in Rob Cross, he's got an opponent who's in fine form. That is a huge victory for Nathan Aspinall. He's within one point of the top four. Peter Wright getting a win. That will give him confidence, but there is so much to like about the Luke Humphreys game right now. And to take him into another final. He won last week. Is he going to win this week? We are ready to go. Win this game, and Nathan Aspinall will be moving into the top four. Win the night, and Luke Littler will be going top of the table. Nathan Aspinall, business taken care of. And it's a third final in four weeks for the Asp. We see the two winners of the last two weeks meet head to head here. This is like a best of three almost now. And it's back to back nightly wins for Luke Humphreys. I had to really work hard tonight. I wanted to win two nights and I did it back to back. So now I have to keep working hard to try and get myself in the top four and stay in there. Nottingham was uh, another good night. Um, I, play, I think that was probably one of my best performances of the Premier League campaign so far. Obviously came up against Littler and it was nice to get one on him, to be quite honest with you. I think that game was probably one of my best games of the Premier League so far. And then it's just come up against an incredible Luke Humphrey. So, yeah, it was all positive. So I walked away from that night with my head held high, um, another three points. And I think that put me in the top four that night. Off to Oldham, doing a bit of filming with the Manchester Evening News and a few different papers. Uh, I'm on a podcast as well this afternoon. I, I enjoy days like this, it's a bit of fun. Doing all this media can only can all be a positive for myself and obviously the game of darts. So what's the plan? What are we doing? Two, two parts for you basically, football and darts. 
you know, if I fall out the top 10, top 16, you know, these, these people ain't going to want to do an interview with me, are they? Nice to you, yeah, you too, pal. As quickly as you can rise, you can fall, so uh, that's all, always in the back of my mind. Welcome to the Manchester is Red podcast. My name is Stephen Railston, and for today's episode, it's a very special episode because I'm joined by Nathan Aspinall. If you hadn't been a sportsman, what would you have been? The only thing I was good at at school was maths. So um, before, obviously, I went darts, I was an accountant. So a boring answer, but I'd be an accountant. And you were a footballer yourself. We were just talking about I was, yeah. Just a bit of context on that. No, I was a goalkeeper. Um, I did play out, well, I was a centre mid at the start. Um, and then I kind of got pushed further and further back and ended up being a goalkeeper. So um, I love I love my football. I miss it so much because obviously I can't being a goalkeeper. I can't play. You know these are my bread and butter. These what make me make me money. So um, yeah, I played for uh, I had trials at Stockport County when I was very young, um, and then I got offered from being at Stockport. I got offered a contract at Rangers, but you know things like ten and eleven. It's it was too much of a commitment for the family. And I played a bit for Cheadle Town before uh, I finally retired at 17. <laughs> well, good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, Nathan. mate. Sure Thank you very much. It. Thanks for attending. Yes. Really appreciate it. No worries, pal. One, two, three. I do a landscape one as well. Really enjoyable interview. Cheers, Nathan. Nice to meet you, mate. I think Nathan comes across brilliantly. He is who he is and he's smashing it, isn't he? So hopefully best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Uh, we saw you win last uh -huh. year in Rotterdam. So. Oh, OK. Good omen then, Thank hopefully. You. Cheers. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Yeah, I'm a professional dart player, top four in the world. Please be advised that reception is on level three. And I'm living the dream, really. You know, it's tough, it's tiring, it's, at times it's gruelling mentally. But, you know what I mean, I'm in Dublin playing in front of 10,000 people tonight. You know, that's what dreams are made of, aren't it? Hi, Gary. It's the Asper. Um, I believe you're not doing too good, so just want to send you a little message. Uh, keep fighting, mate. Get well soon, and hopefully next year we'll see you back here in Dublin. Take care, mate. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, no problem. I hope he's, I hope he's okay as well. Yeah. I speak to a sports psychologist. There should be a lot more of it in our game. If it goes wrong on there. I'm on my own, and I've got 30 seconds to find something. And if you're playing golf, if you have a bad shot. You got your caddy. What went wrong? Football, uh, boxers. You go to your corner every three minutes. Even when you play a longer game and you have the, you play five legs and walk off. You're still on your own because you're not allowed your manager in the back. Yeah. So if you're playing terrible, you could be walking around like that, come on, Nathan, sort yourself out. And it's, it is hard, and uh, there should be a lot more of it. And you, so, it so you're now seeing this? Oh, what 18 is. months, mate. Yeah. 18 months, yeah. It's massive. Yeah. Unbelievable. Playing in Brighton last year, I was 4 0 up on Peter Wright, averaging about 120. I got beat 6 4, and that was when I first started with all my, you know, my throw. It was, yeah, right? I had an absolute yeah. meltdown after the game, and I mean, full on mental breakdown basically. So, the day after from Brighton, I got four trains to Tottenham. So, I went from, I don't even know where, Brighton to somewhere, and I ended up at his house. Uh, I was sat there for six hours in his house, and I just basically, he was just like a guy, he said, right, talk to me, tell me everything. And I didn't stop talking for about four hours. Which he went, wow, he said, your head is just burnt out. He said, your head like a computer chip. And he said, yours is just finally fizzled out and it's just, it's just gone. You need to re basically reprogram yourself. Well, it's the best thing I've ever done. I think I'm probably playing my B minus game at the moment. I'm winning nights, I'm making finals. I've got to be very positive and happy with that, but there's so many more games to go through at the moment. You no know, fingers crossed tonight in Dublin. Play my A game for once. Hello and a very special welcome to the bet MGM Premier League. This place is unbelievable to play darts. The design of the stadium that we're in right now means that the, the noise, it sort of reverberates around. There's been an upturn in form in the Premier League for Nathan. These two could be fine out for a place in the top four come the end of the season. He's led throughout, but he does clinch a vital two points in a close four contest again. And back to back weeks, he beats Rob Cross by six legs to five, and it's two more crucial points for the Asp. MVG versus Gerwin Price, but both in something of a slump. It is four weeks running that Price has lost his opening game, three weeks running, unprecedented for MVG. 
and Van Gerwen does miss out for a fourth week running in the Premier League. Another early exit. Our first semi-final of the night is the world champ up against the world match play champ. Very rarely does this man ever look rushed or flustered anymore. And he just gets games won. He gets matches done and dusted with minimal fuss. I play well against Rob. I always play well against Rob, but there's a hell of a lot more in the tank. And uh, if I'm in, I'm in third place in the in the Premier League, not playing my A game, you've got to take the positives from Manu. When these two were duking it out in the final in Cardiff in the opening week of this, we probably wouldn't have anticipated this game being such as it is. Sixth versus seventh at the start of the night. Michael Smith takes his chance and takes out Gerwin Price. And Michael Smith edges it by the odd leg to set up our final. The bully boy will go head to head with cool hand Luke Humphreys, looking to stop the world number one and world champions. Brilliant winning run in the Premier League. Nine Premier League wins running. That equates to three weeks running for Luke Humphreys. Can he be stopped? My scoring was absolutely fantastic. You know, my finishing was good. I felt like the only thing that annoyed me was against Michael, you know, not being five new out, but, uh, you know, he's a very, very good player and I'm proud of the way I finished the game off in the end. Uh, you know, and it, my scoring was in the last three weeks, not just tonight, it's been, it's been amazing. So that's all I can ask of myself, to be honest. Well, I think Dublin here is always one of the best atmospheres, and, and tonight we've seen one of the best displays of darts as well. The quality was outstanding throughout. Luke Humphrey's absolutely bang on form at the moment, um, and I think he's there for the, for the others to, to try and shoot down. He's, he's, he's going to lead the way, the way things are going. I used to work here. So when I first started out, I signed with Martin and um, I was still struggling financially, so he gave me a job in the warehouse. So even though I used to be an accountant, when I quit my accountancy, I needed a, you know, a few extra quid to get me through the, you know, the tournaments and uh, he gave me a job in the warehouse. So yeah, I, I used to work here from eight till about two in the afternoon and then do my practice after that. Memorabilia Tuesday. Memorabilia Tuesday. So these are the ultimate cards. Got a load of shirts to sign. Getting them out to the uh, the fans, don't we? Been working with Nathan for seven years. Nathan's dad started working for me back in 2017. And he just said his son was really good at darts. He came in one day, I watched him throw darts. I was like, oh, yeah, he's pretty good at it. Let's get a nice pick for socials. Six months later, he left your management company that he was with. Um, I signed him and then the rest is history. Back then I was every, I was living week by week. After the accountancy, when we when we did attempt to go full time at darts, it, it didn't it didn't start off how we wanted it to start. Every time I was playing, if it had, you know, I'd be having a dart at a double and if I won, if you hit that double I'd win five hundred quid and that's a month's rent. And that's what I was thinking. So what what me and Mike well Martin decided really was Come here, come and work in the office, basically, in the warehouse, doing a bit of packing, a bit of extra cash, trying to take a bit of the pressure off me. And, uh, you know, it certainly helped, and I really enjoyed it, actually. Like, all my other jobs have been accountancy in the office. You know, it's quite nice to actually get, get my hands dirty for a change, and I did enjoy it, but after about six months, back, back had gone a bit, and I was like, nah, we'll stick to the darts now. There was one time I phoned him up, I said, I can't play at weekend, I said, I'm skinned, I can't go. He put the phone down on me, got a notification, and he sent me three grand over. And um, I was like, if you could send me some money, he's like, yeah, so go and do what, you know, I was the first one he signed, he's like, go and do what I know you can do. Um, got beat first round, first day, against Ryan Searle. And then 24 hours later, I beat Ryan Searle in the final, and won the first tournament. So obviously that all came from him believing in me, giving me that money. It was hard to get to where I am, but obviously now I'm, I'm, I'm reaping the rewards massively, and yeah, wouldn't change what, I wouldn't change the progress, you know, ever. It is a really big night here in Belfast. Welcome to Northern Ireland's capital city for night nine, the start of the second half of the season. I think the standard this year has been absolutely obscene. It's the highest ever combined average since the start of the Premier League. Stats don't lie, but there's still a long way to go. Can cool hand Luke Humphreys become the first player to win four successive nights in the Premier League? And we go all the way. It's Luke Littler with the darts. Luke Littler beats Luke Humphreys by six. 
legs to five. It's not going to be a record. And Luke Littler wins. Nathan Aspinall sitting pretty in the table, and it could get better with a win over Gedewin Price. And he's got it. That is a really hard fought win. Nathan Aspinall is on the march again. Semi final number one, then, for a spot in tonight's final. It's a rivalry that you think is just going to keep going and going. And the roar from Littler has got MVG in all sorts of trouble. Luke Littler is through to the final here in Belfast. Looking to get back in that top four, the playoffs, Nathan. Who will win this Serpentine semi final? Will it be the Asp or the Snake Bite? Nathan Aspen knows he's just got to hold on to his throw and he's going to make himself hard to break. Maybe only with Dart at Bullseye now. And that's all he needs. Bullseye finished to take him in to the nightly final here in Belfast. Good job, double, doesn't it? Got that. <laughs> That was, that was massive, that was massive. Every pundit and his dog picked Littler to beat Aspinall here, but will the Asp, the rank underdog, bite back here? Well, what an epic succession of visits to Nathan Aspinall. Finds the bullseye, that leaves 75, out of ball. The bull again, oh! for a show-stopping finish! Oh, oh! The nuke detonates on the big stage in Belfast, and he is in front in this match now, Luke Littler. Double 18, and that was to take us all the way. And for a fitting finish on double 10. And it's the green light for glory in Northern Ireland for Luke Littler. Luke the nuke has his first nightly win in the Premier League. You know, I thought I played really well then against Luke. I think, you know, the crowd got me back a little bit at the end. It could have been a different story, but, you know, he, he's, he's played fantastic this year in the Premier League and, um, you know, he, does he deserve that night? I probably think he does, but uh, I think if that 1-1-3 goes, I think he's a little bum would have been twitching a little bit. <laughs> I knew coming into this, I knew I'd, I played Luke, and it's either Michael Smith or Van Gerwen. And then me, me and Nathan in the practice room all night, and we once he got to the final, we were like, it's a ZXF final. So it was just... It was good for both of us, but I'm just classic over the line. I'm, um, you know, cloud nine. You know, I'm third. There's a little bit of a gap now between me and fifth place, and there's so many more uh, gears in the tank. You know, I'd love nothing more to win the Premier League night in Manchester. It's a massive tournament to win. That's what I'm hoping to do is to, to win it, and then I can look forward to the rest of the season in a good, confident and, and strong manner. Luke has shown remarkable consistency since October. He's just full of confidence. He's going on stage thinking no one can beat him. Without doubt, the best player on the planet. It's just about getting in the top four now. I'm obviously in a confident mood, but the job ain't done yet.